In today's special episode, we feature questionable drilling and tapping. Questionable graffiti. Questionable finishing techniques. Questionable power transmission. Questionable material choices. Questionable use of files. Welcome everyone to the least embarrassing corner of the shop. I'm sorry about the face, I was born that way. In this episode we're going to be dealing with a couple pairs of designer sunglasses. It's always those little screws. We've got one pair with a missing screw and another pair that's a little worse off that's got a stripped out hole for one of the screws that holds the lenses in place. There's always the question of whether it's worth it to repair. And in this case, while they're expensive sunglasses, they're really not terribly well made. The deciding factor for me really, two things. I hate throwing things away, and I really like making parts. So I thought this would make an interesting video. Let's get to it. We'll start with a pair of coach sunglasses that has one arm screw missing. We're using some scrap stainless steel from an old printer. To start with, the stock will be turned down to the outer diameter of the screw head. With the work turned to the diameter of the screw head, we need to now turn the diameter for the threads. Proper teacup technique applies here. When using a small plane turning lathe like this, it really helps to rest your fingers against the end of the bed of the lathe. It helps achieve consistent motion of the hand wheel. The work is almost ready to be threaded, but before we do that, I'm just going to round over the end of the work with a fine file. This will make a nice domed end on the screw. When it comes to files, what's finer than fine? This is known as a pivot file. It's super fine, just one shy step away from being a burnisher.
Now we're going to set up for threading using a miniature button die. I haven't made a die holder for the little watchmaker's lathe yet. The technique I use is to put an empty large capacity collet in the tailstock to help keep the die squared up with the work. And I use my fingers to keep the die from spinning while another finger on the same hand pushes the lever feed of the tailstock forward. This die I'm using has a start on one side, and on the opposite side the start is ground away. So we're flipping the die over so that we're not left with partial depth threads for the last few turns. Now that we have our M1.4 threads cut, we can part off the screw. I'm lucky it didn't go flying across the room, I really should have known better. These sunglasses were missing one arm screw, so I thought I'd make a second screw to have as a spare. Then I thought if I'm making two screws, I might as well use both of those screws in the sunglasses and keep the one original as a spare. This is all the same stuff you just saw making a second screw. You might have noticed that I'm just using the calipers and a marking cut to determine the length of the threaded shank on the screws. It's not the most accurate method, but pretty much always it's good enough for making screws. We just need to face and slot the heads and these screws will be done. Each screw is held in a collet and the heads face to the correct thickness.
For slotting the screw heads, we'll be using the milling attachment on the watchmaker's lathe. Setting it up is a simple 94 step process. As you can see, this is quite a bit different than your typical milling attachment for a lathe. Instead of holding the work, this milling attachment actually holds the cutting tool. It's really meant for gear cutting, but if you get a little bit creative with it, you can actually do quite a bit. This arrangement might look a bit iffy, but it's actually fine. In fact, this is a pretty standard arrangement for this type of milling attachment. The belt rack I'm using is one that I made myself from some black iron pipe. There's not a whole lot to it, it just has to provide a set of pulleys for the belt to run over and allow things to sort of swivel and move a little bit to compensate for the travel of the slides. We'll use the pivot file again to deburr the screw heads before we reassemble the sunglasses. Next up is a pair of Gucci sunglasses. As you can see here, one of the inner lens screw holes has been stripped out. The way I'm going to fix this is by drilling out the threaded holes in the sunglasses frames and then tapping them for M1.4 threads. The original screws were M1.2. Here you can see I'm drilling and tapping using a pin vise to hold the drill bit and the tap. That arrangement might sound a bit iffy, but it's actually fine. For real small delicate work like this, it works pretty well. One problem with this approach is that I won't be able to reuse the little plastic washers that came with the sunglasses that protect the lenses from the screw head on one side and the frame on the other side. So as part of this, I'll need to make oversized plastic washers to fit these screws. I don't have any small diameter plastic stock, so for making the small plastic washers, I actually started with one of my favorite materials, a piece of old cutting board. 
It may seem like an iffy choice of materials, but HDPE cutting boards are actually really nice to work with. It's a small rough sawn piece, so I'm going to start by turning it down to about 5mm in diameter on the rivet using the four jaw chuck. From there I'll transfer it into the watchmaker's lathe using a 5mm collet. With the cutting board plastic turned to diameter, I'm just going to drill out the center and then turn the individual washers with the drill left in place to retain them. Off camera I'll deburr these tiny washers with a razor blade. I'm going to use the same material for making this pair of screws, that steel that was salvaged from an old printer. This will be mostly the same process we used for the other screws until we get to the heads. They'll have a different shape and we're going to use a different technique for slotting them. Another minor difference is that the ends of these screws won't be domed. Instead, they'll have a little nub left for helping the screw to start. The nub is the same diameter as the root of the threads. Ah, fiddlesticks. As they say, second verse, same as the first. A little bit louder, a little bit worse. That's a little more like it.
Now once again with the facing and slotting. So the first difference with these screw heads is that they're going to be domed. And the quickest easiest way for me to dome them off is just to use a file. So here I'm using a fine double cut file followed by that little pivot file again. Instead of machining these screw head slots, we're going to be filing them by hand. And here I'm using an old screw head slotting file. This is the type of screw head slotting file used by uh, watchmakers traditionally. I'm using this one to start the slot because it has one side ground flat, kind of a safety side. And that's ideal for bracing against a rest like we have here. This might seem like kind of an iffy way to slot your screw heads, but it can actually give you pretty good results. We're getting ready to use another one of my shop made tools here. This is another one that some of you might remember from a while back. This is my little bluing pan that started out as my first single point threading exercise and I sort of turned it into this. The idea is to use it for tempering and bluing very small parts open like this it's a kind of a normal pan that you can fill with brass shavings or, uh, or or whatever you need to distribute the heat around the part that you're treating but with this lid screwed into it it makes it really convenient for working with screws. There's an assortment of sizes there for common screw sizes used in small things like watches or in our case sunglasses. So I've just been preheating it a little bit over this alcohol lamp here. Now obviously we're not really interested in tempering these screws at all. I just want to of cosmetically uh, gold them rather than blue them. So we'll stop the color change once it gets into kind of a gold color. The original screws on the sunglasses are gold plated steel. It looks like they're electroplated or something. And so I'm not set up to do that. This will give us a respectable match, I hope. Barely starting to change now. I don't want to go too far here. Well, maybe a little darker than I was going for, but better than nothing. I think they'll blend in okay. Nothing left to do now but reassemble.
That's another couple of small jobs, pun fully intended, taken care of. As always, thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more, and please leave a comment if you have any questions or have any ideas for future videos.